Hello, um, my name is Carl Carpenter. Um, I am the tactical and video analyst at StatsBomb. Um, and this webinar is based around pre-match analysis workflows. Um, so let's get started. Um, just before we do, uh, just a little bit of background information on myself. Um, I'm obviously American, as you can tell by accent. Um, I have worked uh, a lot across um, performance analysis roles in the United States um, for the University of Virginia, um, for the U.S. Youth National Team, specifically the U-17s, um, and I currently work at StatsBomb. Um, my role at StatsBomb is to help uh, a lot of clients kind of with their performance analysis uh, questions and solutions using our data, um, and I also help them uh, link traditional kind of coaching and analysis um, backgrounds like video and all that kind of stuff um, alongside our data to help them uh, utilize it best. Um, essentially when you get started on your pre-match, there's, you have to have very efficient and relevant workflows in order to make it, uh, to make it work or else you're going to be, um, doing a lot of unnecessary work or it's going to take a lot of time. Um, a lot of time, especially, you know, a lot of times you'll have two matches per week and you're not going to have a lot of time to actually sit there and watch consistent games. So you need to make sure that prior to actually starting your pre-match analysis, you are um, actually set up to to do so in a way which is efficient. Um, so first, really, what do we care about? Um, avoiding a one size all um, one size fits all approach because it's time consuming and there's not a lot of relevant information. You know, the beauty across all sports is you know there's many many different ways to play, and many coaches have different philosophies in order to do that. Um, so you need to make sure that it's tailored to um, to your team, and that basically takes a lot of time, obviously, because you need to understand how um, the staff and the players that you have at your disposal and you're working with um, play. So if you're a team, for example, using a football context, uh, if you're a team that likes to press high up the pitch and you're not focusing on ways of which you can disrupt the opposition using your pressing system, um, you're not doing your job correctly and you're not going to have a, a meaningful impact like you do. And vice versa, if you're looking at things that you know are not going to happen on the pitch um, based across your team, um, you need to make sure that you kind of filter those out. Um, and if you have these efficient workflows, you're able to create clips and reports, which, which, which create this, um, it's going to be news. You basically ID strengths and weaknesses, um, uh, metrics with reflect just in, in terms of data, um, and, uh, actual insights. So things that can be touched upon in training and actually worked on rather than just outside of the film, uh, session. Um, and obviously I'll touch on these later on as we go forward. Um, and of course you have to have an individual and collective focus, both for your team and the opposition. So not just how the team builds up or attacks as well, um, the key players within that system, um, and how your own key players can affect change in this. So where do we start really? You have to have some basic considerations, sample size of matches. I tend to watch four to five games if possible. Um, I obviously you would like to, to watch more, um, but a lot of data filtering can help kind of get rid of this. But the, the reason that you do is you simply don't have time to sit there and watch games. Um, even if you do, you know, watch it on double speed or you're, you know, have a lot of people working with you. It's, it's just hard with the actual um, demands of a work to week um, to actually put these things together. Um, alongside this, you know, data to support this. What KPIs do we care about? Um, within our system and which actually best reflect how the opposition play. Um, um, obviously you have to make sure it's not overcomplicated because you don't want to have paralysis by analysis by presenting all this information to players and there's completely swarmed by videos and it takes forever, et cetera. Um, touch on this also as well as what things will we actually be able to have in effect in the week Are they actionable and do you reflect your team style of play. So I kind of touched on that prior to, um, but you need to make sure that when you're presenting information and you're actually looking at things in the, the pre-match, um, you need to see, okay, is this something that the staff can actually put into practice? And is it something that will actually make that big of a difference? Um, finally, presentation format. Um, what do the coaching staff and players prefer? If it's a visual medium that they like, if it's uh, data viz, et cetera, um, that obviously, um, you have to build up a report with the coach, coaching staff and the players to kind of fine tune this. And this is something that even myself, I'm, I've, I've been working on over the, over the years. Uh, I started working in analysis in 2017. 
Um, and it's still something that I constantly change and adapt based on playing style or if uh, things are getting a little bit old or stale, um, I constantly change that. Um, so first up, just generally watching the film. A lot of people like to start with the data and then kind of get an, a sense of what they're looking for when they're watching the game. Um, my background is actually in coaching, so I tend to prefer actually sitting there and watching the game, the opposition back. Um, so the basic very um, understanding of things is getting to understand the opposition's tactical setup. Um, this is, you know, if you land a role in football or basketball, netball, whatever it be, um, these are all pretty consistent things that you'll find. Um, what's their formation? Obviously, because that has a lot of roles to play on individual player roles. Um, like I said, key players and phases of play principles. Um, it's it's nice that you can break it down into various areas and it helps with your presentation format because while a lot of sports are incredibly fluid and there's very little stoppages of play, you need to make sure that you're actually, you know, separating it out. So, um, cause that affects training and that affects how players look at the game. Um, how does this relate to us? So when you're watching a game back and, um, you'll see that a team's playing, for example, using another football context. If a team's using a 4-3-3 and we defended a 4-4-2, um, what part of their opposition uh, uh, setup and tactical formation, key players, et cetera, um, what part of that is actually something that we can look on within our principles of play in our game model? Um, and um, other things to consider, you know, recent ma opponents we can compare to. I always tend to, even if it's not their most recent game or games that they've played recently, um, obviously within reason, um, I like to see teams that play a similar style to us and see how they did it. So if, um, for example, I was a, um, a Liverpool analyst and I am looking at a team that were playing in the Bundesliga, I would look at how they compare to teams within the Bundesliga um, who high pressed and looked to create transitions like we Liverpool do. So perhaps Leipzig or... Um, another team of that ilk and as well obviously your your own past history against them if you've played them within that season or even uh the season before um you know within reason um how did we actually do things there what worked what didn't work once you have the video and you kind of have a general style of play um you can jump into linking that video with data um so identifying the opponent's kpis and other important data um you'll have an idea of their, their style of play, but you're not actually sure um, based on various reasons about how actually, you know, they might do something a lot, but they might not necessarily be exceptional at doing so. Um, so you can get a fine tuned approach of what's actually important or as well, um, what other areas that we can kind of get around them. Um, and you'll also look at individuals, uh, data within that system. So if they're a team that uses their wingers really high and wide in attack, um, you can say, okay, how do they actually perform in these scenarios where they're receiving the ball? Um, what kind of actions are they doing? Key passes, et cetera. Um, and that helps provide context and flesh out exactly what the, the opposition do. Um, it, yeah, like I said, it kind of helps you filter your video and show what phases and actions are most represented. Um, so you can see on the right, there's a pressure map up there. You can kind of see, um, you might have an understanding of this team defends in a mid block, but you can actually get a good visualization with the data, um, and see really how they actually are, um, doing these things. Um, uh, like I said, it allows you to cut out extra noise or things which are ineffective. Um, and of course I'm all about context, context contextualization is huge in performance analysis. Um, so when you're presenting, um, video um with the data or data with video whatever how you prefer it uh, i always like to provide context because um video is great for actually um relating to players and staff but it um it needs context and being able to put an objective face to that um to your findings and your analysis is really important and helps you get better buy-in from players and staff Next, like I said, actionable insights. Um, the anal analyst's role is a support duty, and that is to support the players uh, and the staff and how they perform on the pitch. So what information that you actually present can be trained upon. Um, like I uh, put an example here, how they use the ball and how we can disrupt that. Um, obviously, it's it's really cool that if, if you're able to look at, you know, incredibly context, um, complex systems of play, um, but if it's not something that's actually relatable or, you know, feasible for your time frame or just the ability of your players, um, or our staff, 
um, you need to kind of get rid of that information because it's just a waste of time, first of all. And also it's, it's not really something which is going to have a tangible impact. Um, and some other considerations, like I said, is, is it actually attainable or makes sense for your team? So if you're um, a team that, you know, sits in a low block, who's not going to have a lot of the ball um, and you're playing Manchester City, um, you know, does it make sense for you to actually say, hey, you know, I think they're really good or sorry, they're, they're really um, poor against teams that high press them. Uh, you have to look at and kind of take everything in consideration there. Um, so these are things that I always like to look at and think of when I'm perform um, presenting analysis. Um, and finally, like I said, kind of presenting the information, um, you have to build up a report with a coach and his preferences. So if you're a coach, which does not have a data background and loves video, um, is that something that you can, you know, just kind of make sure you work the data or your other information in a video context? Um, if it's, you know, something as basic as does he prefer PowerPoint or keynotes or et cetera, you know, all these kind of things have an impact. And when you first join an analysis role, you're going to be, it's just the basis of the role is that you're going to be second fiddle to coaching staff. And that's always going to be the case. Um, so what you need to do to try to uh, increase buy-in, and this also works on the player side, is to make sure that you actually have, um, it presented in a way which connects with them because if it connects with them, they're more likely to listen to it. And um, from then on, you'll be able to actually, you know, expand your role and, and get a little bit more creative uh, once you do have that buy-in. Um, you also have to, obviously the players are the ones who are going to be performing the actions on the pitch. Um, so is it ways to make it, um, like I said here, uh, you can tailor to the players with lengths to avoid marathon sessions um, getting rid of unnecessary jargon, etc. cetera. Um, I like to present my pre-match information, not just in one giant bulk on, you know, the Friday before a Saturday game. I like to provide um, analysis before every single training session in little bites um, so they're not completely swamped with information. Um, and I also like to present it in ways which actually relates to the training session. So if, um, you know, we're working on our, um, our set pieces, I always prevent the set piece uh, information prior to that session, just so... Um, it relates to them and they're actually okay to connect with players these days. They're asking a lot of questions about not just, you know, what they're doing, but why they're doing it. Um, and if you can prevent, present it this way, it has a huge effect and players are more likely to listen to. Um, outside of the traditional kind of team session oriented groups, I like to have uh, my reports and information readily available to, to whenever they need it throughout the week. Um, You'll work with players who don't like analysis. You'll work with players who absolutely love analysis and want to know every single thing about what they're doing on the pitch. Um, just making sure it's available is really, really important to um, to everyone there. So uh, if you can create dashboards online, which players can access, if you have uh, a huddle account with whatever team or club you're working for and you're able to put up clips for them to watch on their own time, um, it's really important that, you know, most likely than not, I've learned throughout my time in analysis, if if a player or staff um, asks you to do something, they probably wanted it yesterday. Um, so you can't be scrambling. You just have to prepare prepare for every single eventuality. And having this analysis ready um, throughout the week is really, really important. So, yeah, that's a, that's a general kind of idea of um, my pre-match workflows and ones which have worked for me. Um, like I said, you'll you'll find your own kind of niche and things which you do excel at and which things work for you and your team. Um, and I, my, I myself am constantly changing and adapting myself to making sure that I have the biggest impact because as technology grows, players change, you know, you have different coaches and staff. Um, you can't just keep pumping out the same reports week in, week out. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you a good idea of, of what to look for when you're putting together pre-match workflows. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me here. My email is listed. Um, and thank you very much.